Hello everyone, Sir Monkey Shot Azabi here, back again with Hunter Hunter. We're on episode 49, and in the last episode we had the uh, the Antiques Roadshow of, uh, of episodes where uh, we had Gon Killua um, go out and uh, buy sort of these antiques that were abused with uh, Nen, and then sell them on for more money. Um, <laughs> and in the uh, in all of that, uh, there was a guy that came out called Zepile who I sort of, I mean, he helped, I guess, in one of their... Um, dealings where they were going to sell um, like a, a fucking I don't know like a carved statue thing that uh, that uh, they thought was just you know some kind of interesting sculpture thing that would sell for quite a lot of money. Turns out there was actually uh, something. Well, there was actually a lot of things hidden inside, a lot of treasure and stuff like that, which uh, which Zepile knew, um, and he came in and helped them out. And uh, because of that, he is now going to be their official appraiser. Um, which I guess is going to help them get the money that they can so that they can afford uh, the Greed Island uh, game. Um, so yeah, that's going to happen. Um, <laughs> it, was a, it was a very connective episode, considering what happened in the episode before with Kurapika and Uvo and that fight. Um, you know, they, they, had to, they had to slow it down a bit, get, get the calm back um, so we can ramp it up again. Um, so yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what happens in these uh, next couple episodes. I imagine we're going to... Um, I, I can probably see us going, like, continuing on with Gon and Killua and leaving Kurapika for a bit. Um, because Kurapika's had this, like, run of episodes where we have, like, we've stuck with him um, throughout this uh, this whole ordeal with the auction and stuff. Um, you know, so I, I think we're probably going to be sticking with Gon, Killua, and the Oreo. Uh, while they chase down uh, one of the Phantom Troop members themselves so they can get some, uh, some uh, reward money. Uh, and then that'll help obviously towards their their buying of uh, Greed Island. Um, they've already found Machi and Nobunaga, or like they know where they're going. They're obviously they're kind of undercover right now, um, heading through the city. Uh, so yeah, it's gonna be interesting. Um, they could have got some reward money if uh, they met up with Kurapika and found out where Uva's body's laying, <laughs> but. Uh, for some reason, I just don't think that's going to happen, so... Oh well. Uh, yeah, I don't think there's anything else to really talk about, so we're just going to get in episode 49 and see what we get. So without further ado, let's go. Okay. Oh, fuck me. It's hot. Oh, right. So Gone and Kilwa are now captured by the troop, but... It seems that, you know... Gone and Kilwa's done good there because... Well, specifically Killua because he was he was presenting the truth but hiding certain things. So he, he was telling the truth. He just wasn't given the whole state of affairs, right? Um, which was smart on his... On their... Uh, but, you know, gone... I mean, he only had, like... He was only given one question, really. And does he know the chain user? He doesn't because obviously he doesn't know. He hasn't heard from Kurapika. Well, no, did no, he didn't. He, he hasn't even talked to him yet because he tried ringing him and he didn't answer. Right, so yeah, I mean they haven't heard from Kurapika in so long. They don't even know that he can use Nen at this point, you know. So I was about to wonder if it was um, what was her name? What is her name? The one that looks like Annie from Attack on Titan. I did write it down somewhere. Oh, wait a minute. Is that it? Is it Pakanoda? Is that her? I think it is, right? Um, I was wondering if she had like some kind of ability to know when someone's lying and telling the truth. Um, but then it feels like, obviously, with Killua not having her there, I don't know. I guess they could be a bit more like, you know, just going off instinct, like, are you lying or not kind of thing, whereas Pakanoda might be a bit more, you know. But... God, the women are scarier <laughs> because they don't like. You see the 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 guys, right? The guys who are like basically like questioning Killua are so much more like upfront, like intimidating, like trying to imit intimidate. But because the women are so like, you know, they've still got like that that female quality of like not being um, as like intimidating about like uh or i will like kind of kill you in a way they seem like more like you know trying to put like gone sort of at ease you know 
in a way, uh, if you get what I'm if you get what I'm saying. Um, well, that just makes them like more scary. Um, but yeah, fuck. I mean, Hisoka. I think Hisoka's gonna get them to escape. Like he's gonna he's gonna make way for them to to escape. Um, but I don't think it will be as obvious. I think there has to be something that will end up happening. I think because, well, first of all, the fucking the, the, the mafia has recruited the Zaldic family to to take to take down the troop. <laughs> Fuck! Whoa! I did I did not see that coming, and I'm fucking excited for it. So I think that's what could possibly happen. There could be an attack on the on the Phantom Troop hideout by the Zaldic family. So yeah, also so you have that connection with freeing Kilwa that way, but also in the um, in the chaos that might occur because of that, Hisoka allows um, you know like I guess safe passage out um, for Gon and Kilwa because the thing is with Hisoka, yeah, he doesn't want to um, you know he he doesn't want to create any reason as to why he may be a traitor. Right, because he wants to be obviously as close to Krolo as he can be, so that he he can eventually fight him. But um, but he also is like you know, like Gon and Killua and that are like subjects to him that like you know experiments that he's he's like waiting for to like mature. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like he's planted the seed, he's just waiting for it to grow. Um, you know, with with them two specifically Gon, so. He's not gonna, you know, unless he thinks that they're safe there, and he might be fine with them, fine with them being there. But, um, but yeah, but it's also another thing that could possibly happen is obviously Hisoka being in contact with Kurapika can let Kurapika know because obviously he knows that Kurapika are with, um, are, you know, friends with Gon and Kilwa that, you know, this is what is happening. So you can, so you also can have like. You can have a number of the things go down in a whole lot of different ways. Like Kurapika could, I mean, I don't know if Kurapika would, would he? Maybe if he let like your scarlet eyes get the better of him, like I can see him just like, just, you know what I mean? Maybe just going out of his way to fucking attack the hideout directly, but he would have to find out where it was first and, and all of that. Um, I don't know, who knows? Maybe the fucking Zoldic family and Kurapika are like attack at like roughly the same time. And then it's just like everyone fucking <laughs> pretty much like everyone for themselves. It'd be crazy. Um but yeah, a lot of a lot of things could happen. So from the beginning of the episode, it's interesting. Leo had randomers involved. Like he had random people who he was calling and it was I I I don't know that those have must those must have been the Um the uh, the people that had information that he was uh, that they gave up money for right so they could have information as to where um, like to find you know the phantom troop and whatnot it's gotta have been right I just figured like it, it was a bit confusing at the start the way Leo was talking that it might have been something like they had people like Leo had people like you know sort of like he would have recruited them to sort of like keep an eye on them but I think it was the other way around right I think the, those were the ones that had the information that give like the, the give to give to Leo right and that's how he, he found out where they were I think that's what it was um Killer as well straight up saying that he doesn't think he, he like they can handle him of course we've, we've seen that like before about like you know Killer tends to know a person's sort of power level in a way and like where they are, how far they're like they are off, because obviously there's sort of like a there's a margin of error, like not a margin of error, but like a sort of like the there's a there can be like a fine line depending on the power level of one versus another, like how much you can give to you know maybe like strategy or something like that. Um, I, I think that says more about like the way Kurapika fights and stuff like that is that a lot of his is based around like strategy and and you know working with strengths and weaknesses and stuff like that um and everything you can get around that even if the power level difference is is quite huge um whereas kilowatt i think is is based 
it's not primarily like what you would consider with Kurapika as in like, you know, sort of, uh, you know, tactics and strategy, but more so like, you know, I think Killer was more along the lines of sort of like street smarts, you know, so he knows which fights to take and which ones not to, um, you know, but it's like, you know, if you had Kurapika, and this is probably why they're, they're my two favorite characters, you know what I mean? Like, they're both smart in their own right, but for, from, like, from different reasons, you know what I mean? Um, but, like, you know, you can kind of put, you know, like, Kurapika and Killua's situation where they're following, and that moment where Killua, like, where they're moving into a deserted area, and Killua's like, I'll, like, I'll continue on, Kurapika might have decided not to go in there, you know what I mean? Um... So it's interesting that you can compare them and where they are similar on a lot of levels, they're actually different as well. So between those two characters, like, you know what I mean, they're, they're, my, they're my two favorite characters, but you know what I mean? I just like the sort of the differences that each of them could take, the fact that they're smart, but in different ways. Uh, it's interesting. I like comparing those two. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's crazy. Like... I mean, because for so long, we've just seen Killua, like, not have to struggle against, like, any adversity, really. Um, you know what I mean? I mean, he had that thing with their... With their... Zushi, right? Where Zushi wouldn't go down. Um, you know what I mean? But that was, like, in terms of, like, raw attack power. But to, like, you know... Throughout the whole show, like, we've seen him, like, you know... He has this innate ability to just be badass and like take people down without you know without a second thought um and it's just interesting to 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 like see it come to fucking come to fruition where kill even Killua is like outdone you know what i mean i mean even the guy thinks or whatever was surprised by the way that Killua sort of was fighting and even went, <laughs> you know what i mean like damn um, so yeah, he has got some power, but I mean, the guy was just following like everything that you know, all that speed. He's just following him, following him the whole way. I think he fucking took. It looked like he bloody took some bloody skin off of of Killua's like shins as well. Nasty, but um, but yeah, I think that was just down to Killua like getting out of that situation, right? I think like he forced the the sort of like the rotation, which you know. To, be, to get free, essentially. Um, so, yeah. He also mentioned... Um, Killua had also mentioned that uh, Killua's father had trouble with a troop member before. Now, I think... I'll, I wouldn't be surprised if that was to do with the the other member. Right? Because... I don't know if I wrote it down, but I seem to recall... There was somebody who was talking about... Was it Hisoka that was talking about... Um, yeah, because it was when he was talking with uh, Kurapika, right? And he was talking about um, in order to get into the Phantom Troop, uh, you either have to kill one and take their place, or you get chosen by, you know, the chief. Um, Krolo, right? So, I'm trying to, th I don't think I did. Oh, I don't think I did. Yeah, always accompanied by two members. So yeah, replacing a member by killing them or being selected by the chief. Yeah, and I didn't write down the other one, but obviously four was taken over by, you know, by um by Hisoka. I imagine he killed the previous four, the previous number four, and then um, there was another one which I think was like was it like number ten or something. I can't remember, but there was another one right that was refilled in, and I wonder if that was the guy that um. Killua's father had killed, but had trouble with. Um, but yeah, it's interesting now the fact that you know what I mean. Don't go. It's too. It's like too much trouble, not worth the money. And that's coming from you know Killua's father, who you know I imagine out of the full Zaldic family, like at this moment, the father is the best of the best. You know, I could be wrong. It's just you know just the way I, I kind of I kind of see it. But yeah, it's interesting that they're being recruited. I can't fucking wait. And just hired to take down the Phantom Troop. So yeah, that they're going at it again. Um It's oh god. The things that can happen. They also want to try and like um, well, this is a complete 
hypothetical, I think, from what Mach like what Machi was saying, that they actually want to recruit Kurapika into that. I mean, he killed Uvo, so I guess he could take the place, but he's not going to, is he? He's just not going to do that. Um, but I don't know. Maybe crollo has got away with words. You know what I mean? We haven't seen him like use anything, like, you know, use any power yet. But I don't know. Maybe he's, maybe he's got some. Maybe he's just good with words, you know. So uh, he's maybe hoping that he can like turn Kurapika and like these are all the benefits, you know what I mean? But it's just not going to happen. Kurapika's not going to not going to join. Be interesting though. Um, so yeah, the auction will continue even though the father, uh, Neon's father, said, you know, told her that the auction's off. Obviously, just to try and get her out because if, the, <laughs> if she knew that the auction was going to continue, she would just want to stay. I mean, just that way inclined to very spoiled. Um. So yeah, we also had the the whole thing of Nobunaga like sensing through Zetsu. Like that that was a whole thing that I was confused about, and I'm I'm not sure if there's like something else that they have like another kind of sense because bit like for the longest time when Machi and Nobunaga are just sitting there and they're like, you know what I mean? We're being watched. I just don't know from where. And then when Kilo and Gon decide to actually use Zetsu so that, that their presence can't be sensed. They're, they're asking like, are we actually being followed? Maybe, probably, uh, you know what I mean? So I thought that was all based upon like, just let's just act like we're being followed. You know what I mean? Like, let's just say that we're being followed. Even if we're not, then, oh well, whatever, we've lost nothing. I think that was the whole, like, you know, but then, but then when they have eventually got into like that deserted sort of like town center place, Nobunaga like, he says he can, like he can sense them through Zetsu, even though you know they're, they were saying like, "Wow, that's really good." Like I can't sense anything, but then they can sense them, but they've still got Zetsu up. I don't know. <laughs> I, I just you know. And then you know, Machi. I mean, well, first of all, they figured out the whole thing of like Nobunaga was like you know he was saying all of these probabilities and stuff, but he had narrowed down the the reason as to why Kurapika is done what he you know the reason why he's gone out and killed Uvo on his own personal grudge stuff like that he managed to you know but you know I don't think it's too far-fetched that someone would be able to get that but I have no idea how Machi managed to figure out that there is some link between <laughs> I don't know I guess on some level that might not be too far-fetched either because I guess if he's you know if because Kurapika is on some personal grudge that it, it would immediately go from Uvo to you know but the thing is, is that they don't—they don't have any sort of because it's not like this. The Phantom Troop thing is like all like brushed under the carpet, and like only a few people know about it. I mean, they're all wanted. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I don't think it's too far fetched for it to not be connected. Like, not everything's going to be connected to Kurapika. You know? I just—I don't know. I just find it interesting, like. I guess on my level, I was thinking, like, how the fuck have, have she, has she sensed a connection between Kurapika and Gon and Killua? And I was thinking about it, like, on, like, friendship level. Like, like how the fuck did, does she know that they're connected in that way? But then maybe on her level, she's just thinking, oh, it's connected because Kurapika has probably killed Uvo and now they're, now he's after us. So maybe it is on that level. I don't know. But, um, but yeah, it's crazy. I mean, when I was watching it, it felt, like, really, like, out of left field. Like, how the fuck does she know that? But... I don't know. I guess the more I talk about it, I guess it could it could be just... It's all just hypotheticals, really. I felt like that was that whole thing. That was everything that Machi and Nobunaga were doing this whole whole episode was just completely hypotheticals. Like, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Probably, probably not. <laughs> you know? Like, there was nothing that was concrete. It was only, like... I mean, they had other people. Like, the, it, it's... This is stuff that has happened before, like, in other... You know, you say this all the time in other shows where you have the person who, uh, you know, is being watched and being followed. So in that regard, it's Machi and Nobunaga, right? They think that they're being followed and therefore they have other people waiting in the wings while they move forward. And then, you know, the people who are waiting to see if they are being followed are on the lookout to see if anyone's following them. They see them followed and then they follow them from behind and then you know, captured and then that pins that, right? And then that's the stuff. So, so yeah, I think that was just down to experience, which I don't think, it's interesting, especially in this, um, and with Killua being an assassin, generally, you know, 
following somebody and going undetected is something that Killua has probably done like you know you know a lot a shit ton um however i don't think because he is an assassin you know generally it might be you know under cover of night or the idea is to go unnoticed anyway that he would have i think that that was probably down to inexperience and why um why Kilwa had never thought about it i think it's the inexperience is also the reasoning as to why he chose to push on when he had that mo like that lapse of should i continue or shouldn't i you know and then he decided to go maybe lack of experience and that's where i think you know even though kurapika might not have had the experience i think just coming into like what is the smart play here screw it we'll just let them go but um you know pushing ever onward you know and i thought that was interesting as well the whole you know forcing uh, uh, gone to promise that you know if shit goes south we get the fuck out there and that's it because gone has this sort of tendency to want to just go and, and and go for it you know what i mean even though there may not be any logical reason as to why he should like he would get his fucking ass kicked but he would go for it anyway um and i think Kilwell obviously understands that and that's the reason why he forced the promise but you know in the same way Kilwa when he had that lapse, decided to move forward instead of coming back. I think that's also the same thing where Killua is like, he's looking at it in terms of, you know, um, uh, you know, they are right here, depending on the information we get here, or, you know, if something does happen, maybe we are able to take one of them out that we get that money and then we were able to push forward and get, you know, that greed island game and whatever and get the money together. Um, but yeah, inexperience, I think, not understanding that they could be followed as well. And that is a, you know, a legitimate strategy right there. So, yeah, but uh, they're captured by the troop. Um, and it's going to be interesting next episode to see if... I, I kind of just want Hisoka to come up and talk again, like, to them, <laughs> you know? Just to see what he thinks about it. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I have to assume Leo is going to think that they're captured as well. So it's going to be interesting to see what he does on his side because he's got nobody now. I think the only thing is really is with Zepile, right? I think, <laughs> you know, I don't know. But uh, yeah, I think that's, that's all I've got. So yeah, very good episode. Very interesting. Um, and they can't wait to see what happens next. So that's all I've got. So thank you for watching. In the description below, I think certain things. Discord, get yourself over there if you want any information on my content. And I also have a Patreon as well where there's early access there where you get four episodes of Hunter x Hunter every week. That's two on Monday and two on Friday, as opposed to the usual two episodes that general public get. There's also full length there, which will come back uh, in a bit. But obviously, all of these have been full length. Um, but when I get more time, that'll be going back there. And there's also other tiers there as well, where you can obviously pay for shows to be watched and things like that. But, you know, go have a look at those, see if they interest you. If not, don't worry about it. But that is all I've got. So thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.